Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, on January 6th, a Proud Boy member named Aaron pushed his way towards the Capitol, breaching a barricade and holding it open for other rioters to more easily enter the building. At some point, however, he paused and sent the following message to his FBI handler, quote, Barriers down at Capitol building, crowd surged forward, about to reach the building now, Proud Boys did not do it nor inspire. Now, Aaron is one of quite a number of FBI informants who we now know were working inside the right-wing groups that have been charged with seditious conspiracy in connection with those January 6 attacks. The FBI had men inside the Proud Boys and inside the Oath Keepers. The founder of the Proud Boys himself had been a Fed informant. So if the FBI had paid informants with a front row seat to January 6 plotting, how the hell did law enforcement fail so dramatically on that day, caught seemingly with their pants down as a bunch of MAGA and QAnon nutjobs stormed the Capitol? Now, right-wing commentators have suggested this wasn't actually a failure, but rather a plot by the deep state to make Trump supporters look bad. The new evidence that has emerged as part of the Proud Boys, tri Proud Boys trial reveals a much simpler explanation. Law enforcement failed to disrupt the attack or secure the Capitol due to run-of-the-mill human failings of incompetence and ideological blindness, fueled by a Trump administration that was obsessed with Antifa and other left-wing groups. Now, Aaron and every other FBI informant associated with the Proud Boys, and there were a lot of them, tell basically the same story. The feds had actually no interest in the Proud Boys, only in their left-wing nemesis, Antifa. According to the Washington Post, quote, the evidence shown in court indicates that many of the FBI sources inside the Proud Boys were asked only about their ideological opponents on the left, even as that right-wing group was implicated in threats and violence at protests across the United States. Aaron himself testified that before January 6th, the FBI never asked him to look for information about the Proud Boys. When he informed his handler he was going to D.C. for the protest, he was asked only to try to see if I could locate someone in D.C. that had nothing to do with the Proud Boys, he testified. So even as he is telling the feds he's going to D.C. for January 6th protests, his fed handlers are not remotely curious about what the Proud Boys might be planning there. It appears the feds didn't ask any of their Proud Boys informants for Proud Boys info. Founder Enrique Tario was a Fed informant on a healthcare fraud case a while back and continued to engage the agency in the years to come. Another defendant, Joseph Biggs, admitted he had also been an FBI informant providing information on, quote, Antifa networks. Another right-wing activist, Jenny Lynn Salinas, was revealed to be a government informant just before taking the stand to defend Proud Boys founder Enrique Tario. She was so cozy with the group that she was providing extensive advice for Proud Boys members' legal defense, unbeknownst to her FBI handlers. Similar to the others, Salinas reportedly swore under oath that she was only providing info to the government on Antifa and the border, not on the members of the violent group that she was apparently deeply enmeshed with. As the judge explained, quote, she wasn't tasked with reporting on Proud Boys. Her contacts with the defense camp are easily explained by her sympathy for the defendants. Another Fed informant was actually at a heavily scrutinized parking lot meeting between Proud Boys leader Tario and Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rhodes on the day before January 6th. So the feds literally had a guy at what they contend was a key meeting the day before the attacks, still nothing, no action. Now, that particular informant was uh, able to avoid testifying because of fears of incriminating himself. The whole situation was really summed up quite well by yet another Proud Boy informant who said that, quote, they didn't want to know about the Proud Boys, they wanted to know about Antifa. With regards to January 6th, he indicated that the feds were radio silent, apart from asking in advance whether he was going and afterwards whether he committed any crimes. This fits with the picture of law enforcement failure that has emerged since January 6th, because while the FBI may not have been getting tips from their Proud Boy sources who were only focused on a mostly fictional Antifa, they were getting hundreds of other tips from a variety of sources around the country. Among those many tips was actually an Oath Keeper member who was so alarmed by the group's increasingly violent rhetoric, he secretly recorded a meeting provided to the FBI. Once again, FBI took no action on this or any other tip until after the fact. Failing to disrupt the activities in advance, failing alongside every other law enforcement agency to provide adequate security on the day of the attacks. Their own ideological biases, combined with the Trump administration's obsession with the Antifa, blinded them to the possibility of violence that was literally right in front of them. So if they weren't disrupting actual plots, being hatched right under their noses with help from their own informants, what were they actually doing? Well, journalist Trevor Aronson of the Alphabet Boys podcast provides one answer here. They were apparently using criminals to infiltrate Black Lives Matter protests in an attempt to entrap protest leaders, foment violence, and sow dissent in those groups. 
The Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot mess provides another answer. They were also apparently helping to hatch high-profile plots that they could then swoop in and pretend to disrupt in a way that would be advantageous for a lot of law enforcement careers because it's so high-profile. It's a lot of work, I guess, to invent kidnapping plots and entrap protesters with low-level gun charges. I suppose there just wasn't any time left over to notice and deal with any actual threats. This whole rotten system has got to be reformed root and branch. The failures, the blind spots, the lawlessness, innocents are entrapped, criminals are paid, fake plots are invented, real plots are ignored. Instead, I guess, they'll just get another budget increase to spy more, fail more, and fund even more criminals. It is unreal when you every hey guys ready or not 2024 is fully upon us now and soccer and i have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election yeah we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage to add staff to upgrade the studio we just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election which is possible so if you can help us out become a premium subscriber today breakingpoints.com or the link is down here in the description video it really means the world to us and if you like what we're all about this is the best possible way to keep us 100 independent working only for you.